Welcome to Courtside, everyone. A discussion of Donald Trump and, well, the legal mess he continues to be in. It is day 75. Donald Trump is still saying, love me two times to impeachment. The Senate hasn't given us an indication of when they're going to start trial, but I expect some details to be filled in soon as the composition of the Senate changes due to the Georgia election and those senators being sworn in. There have been some developments, nothing earth shattering, but kind of ideal for a Sunday, short and snappy with a little bit of Katyal snark for you. First thing is on Friday night, the My Pillow guy went to visit Donald Trump at the White House. So, brought to you from the makers of My Pillow, My Coup. Now, to be fair, this happened Friday night, but I honestly couldn't get my mind around it by the time we filmed yesterday. So, I need to have some appropriate, solemn distance. So, we've had that distance. Okay, so here's what happened Mike Lindell, who is the CEO of My Pillow, went to see Donald Trump. Trump welcomed him with open arms because, well, I think Lindell is the only person who's wanted to see Trump for the past week. I mean, Melania is like, I don't care, do you? Anyway, this whippersnapper CEO decided to get filmed with his notes in full view, Chris Kobach style, outside of the White, outside of the White House in the West Wing. And his notes say things like Donald Trump should declare martial law, that Donald Trump won the election. There's something in the notes about doing something with Cash Patel, who's this complete soulless hack for Donald Trump, and maybe something in there about using the Insurrection Act. Now, all that is just on the half page that we could see. The rest we weren't able to because that didn't get photographed. Lindell fortunately had the sense to cover that part up. So Mike Lindell wants to stage a coup. He has no clue how federal law works, and he always looks at least a little bit surprised by the words coming out of his own mouth. He's truly the Louis Gohmert of the betting industry. And you gotta kinda wonder about Donald Trump. Only a Trump would think, hmm, turns out Rudy Giuliani, not such a good lawyer. Better go to the My Pillow guy for some legal advice. And speaking of Rudy, you know Rudy is saying he's now going to go defend the president in impeachment. He's like kind of the only guy who's willing at this point. And a lot of you have written in to me asking questions about what happens to Trump if he gets impeached or convicted. Does he get his Secret Service protection? And by the way, in my notes, it says SS protection. Donald Trump's probably the first guy who actually president, who former president who wanted SS protection, but that's a separate matter. Anyway, I looked up the law on this all for you because of these questions. I had to look it up because, you know, for normal presidents, you don't have these questions. But of course, here we do. So the bad news for all of us taxpayers is that Donald Trump is going to get his stipends. There's a law passed in 1958 called the Former Presidents Act. And it says former presidents get a pension, they get government-paid staff, government-paid office space and furniture, a $1 million annual budget for security and travel, and a half million dollar annual budget for a spouse's security and travel after leaving office. I mean, we're gonna spend $500,000 just to allow Melania to flee from Donald. Anyway, the way they wrote this law in 1958, unfortunately, Trump's going to get these benefits. It says a, it defines a former president as someone who held the office and, quote, whose service in such office shall have been terminated other than by removal pursuant to Section 4 of Article 2 of the Constitution. That's the impeachment section. So if he were able to be, Trump were able to be removed by January 20th, which, of course, you know, I think he should be, but it's not realistic. Uh, he wouldn't get these stipends and so on. But realistically, Trump is not being removed from the presidency through impeachment by Wednesday. So he's going to get his travel budget. And I know it's frustrating to imagine that Donald Trump might use federal money to travel around the country and continue to hold his hateful rallies. But remember, this is the same Donald Trump we've seen for the last four years doing that with our taxpayer dollars. And in Erie, Pennsylvania, he actually told a crowd of his own supporters he didn't want to be there. So the travel budget is sliding straight between the cushions of a couch and Mar-a-Lago, as best I can tell. And jail, 
which we've talked about, I do think is very possibly Donald Trump's future, is not going to be enough to strip him of these benefits because it's only about impeachment and removal through that means under this 1958 law. So that creates the oddity that a guy in jail might get Secret Service protection. Now, Congress can do something about it. They can pass a new law revoking all of these benefits for Trump. And I think it's worth it. I mean, this guy hasn't been able to manage giving all of those suffering people in America who've lost their jobs and their health due to coronavirus a measly $2,000. I don't think he should get millions of dollars in cash and Secret Service protection. I think it's outrageous. And it seems a bit unfair, I grant you, to cut the Trump family security budget. I mean, how else can Jared and Ivanka afford the $3,000 a month it takes to protect their bathrooms from Secret Service agents? I mean, once Donald Trump can't gouge the Secret Service anymore, between that and the loss of his PGA championships locations and his irrelevance to foreign lobbyists, the Trump Organization may actually be forced to hire leadership that actually understands how to run a business. I don't think Deutsche Bank is going to even help them out of this one. There is one thing I think that Vice President and President-elect Biden can do on January 20th, and I think he should, and that is cut off access to Donald Trump's intelligence briefings. Normally, if you're a former president, you get intelligence briefings after you leave office, but that's normal precedence. It's just custom. It can be cut off at any time. And my view is Donald Trump should be cut off on day one, January 20th. I mean, I know we all talk about how Donald Trump is too lazy to read his briefings, but do you have like any doubt that Trump would scour them the minute that he realizes that Vladimir Part Putin might be in the market for some of this intelligence? I mean, this isn't, by the way, this cutting off of intelligence, not just my idea. It's the idea of Susan Gordon, who was the Trump principal deputy director of national intelligence from 2017 to 2019. Donald Trump is a guy who walks like a Russian asset. He talks like a Russian asset. He quacks like a Russian asset. He's done more to bring down this country than any American in our lifetimes from Aldrich Ames on. And it's only going to get worse when he's out of office. The guy has no skills. No one is going to pay this guy to speak except maybe at the My Pillow convention. And My Pillow, I suspect, will soon be on its way to my insolvency. So look, we have like 65 hours left in this presidency. I don't doubt that there are going to be 65 very eventful hours. And I'm going to be with you for them. We'll do courtside every night. Tonight, I think I'm going to hit 100,000 Instagram subscribers. So a special shout out to all of you who watch me that way. It has been a true privilege to talk with each of you in whatever way you watch or hear me. And um, we uh, this is episode 64 of Courtside. We're going to have at least three more, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.